welcome back to the channel and today we are taking a look at our most recent playoff war in the fury cup and i gotta say this is probably the worst war i've ever seen especially from our team uh we're gonna get into what happened but uh it was a crazy war because we had some uh as you can see let's just look we had two one stars <laughs> so somehow we won with two one stars i don't know we uh we ended up pretty much winning off defense the enemy clan couldn't couldn't find a triple on any of our bases they were very close to getting uh a couple one stars actually but nothing really close to a triple uh we had a very un i'm not going to show the one stars obviously because i don't want to burn anyone's bases but like this for example is a 60 percent one star uh it wasn't actually that close it had there was a problem with the queen she beat through a wall instead of going for the town hall and uh trying to adjust it was a queen charge hogs so you know hogs aren't the greatest for percent but had to like kind of adjust on the fly and we had called to draw drop the hogs in and the queen started beating the wall after the hogs went down and it, it was like clear as day that she was going to get the town hall so uh kind of unfortunate and it ended up just coming from the opposite side with the hogs thinking that the queen was going to do what she was supposed to do and then alex here uh what it would have been a three star again uh we were doing a drag back sending the blimp over the top of the dragon it's kind of risky you know inherently kind of risky because of the plan but base was crushed uh all we needed to do was get the town hall and the tornado trap caught the blimp and spun it in front of a single inferno and the single happened to lock onto the blimp instead of one of the you know 10 dragons that were alive and it caused the blimp to fail and the town hall ended up killing the bats so still almost got the triple but and then uh yeah ultra got the 69 and then these two attacks so we're gonna get into uh killian and so we had seen this base before and killian kind of just uh made the plan run similar to the one that we had uh tripled with it before and we kind of just re-ran it. it it was a pretty simple plan we're all on voice me uh killian and i believe matt who was the one who actually tripled this base so kind of came down with a plan but what we're gonna end up seeing here is uh gonna do like a warden walk this way uh do a, a little funnel down here with uh with the siege barracks and whatnot and then gonna do a, a quad quake into this area kind of soften everything up and then a jump over the back end and just kind of plow through the middle of the base because as you can see, you know, especially with the Yeti Bowler attacks, um, everything here is reachable. Everything here is reachable. Air defense will go down on entry. Everything kind of comes into here. Royal Champ kind of squeaks out the backside. Jump opens up the scatter shot and back in Inferno. And then the Hogs from the Siege Barrack kind of sweep through here. And everything from the inside can reach this Town Hall. So... Kind of like a, a big wave attack. Everything kind of pushes through and meets up here at 6 o'clock. Uh, this came in. So we started off the war with a 1 star. So this was the second attack uh, directly after that 1 star. And it ended up kind of breathing some life into us. So let's get into it. Very nice plan here. Uh, it's going to be a really short word, Warden Walk. Because we didn't really need any value on the Warden Walk. We were just using him as a funnel troop pretty much. I would have liked to have seen us wait until the air defense went down. I think that would have made it a little bit smoother. You're going to see the air defense gets kind of skipped. And then a bowler comes over and gets it. But gets the siege barracks down nice and early. This way we could push the king into the base with the yetis. Uh, last time we did this attack, the king actually ended up going outside. Kind of just died to that single inferno. So wasn't the best usage out of him. So we get the king inside. And you see what I mean about the air defense? So air defense stays up. Warden kind of trails behind. He's being really patient with his tome. Kind of giving everything time to get into the middle of the base. He's got the, the barbarians from the barbarian king. Kind of tanking everything so he doesn't really need the tome. Now he uses the tome. Queen's lagging behind killing the pups. Which is actually ideal. Because uh, she's going to end up pulling the town hall. 
Yetis are going to start dying out because the healers didn't transition. Got the royal champ coming in. But because the healers didn't transition, it actually ends up working out in his favor. Because his queen still has ability, full health. And she's going to be able to take that jump to get that last single inferno. So, enemy king stays up, which was kind of expected. But right at this moment, we knew it was a triple because the RC is going to clear a couple more buildings. He's got clean up down over here. And we were basically just saying like, hey, hold on to the ability for as long as we can. Uh, once these Teslas go down, Queen actually does something smart here. He's going to go get the Tesla in the Archer Tower early. Warden's doing a little bit of tanking. Archer's down. And go ahead and just fast forward. Really nice plan. Really clutch too. I mean, as far as Yeti attackers go, uh, Killian and Matt, they, they just crush these Yeti bases. So not even using the Queen ability. All right, so let me set the stage. So we started off with a one star, and then, uh, here, let's go into the attacks, war events. So we start off with the one star, very unfortunate, kind of shitty, right? And then they go for a high two on ultra. So Killian comes back, and he triples, but we're way behind on percent, because we had those 60% one star, and then they got the 91% two star. So we got the triple, but we're still really worried about percent. Then they come in with a 68% on Alex. And we're like, we're up by like 1%, you know, or something like that at that point. So we're tied on triples. Their attacks weren't that good. And, uh, you know, we're we're up on percent. Uh, Ultra had a, a blimp fail and caused it to be a low percent kind of dive for the town hall. So no real big percent change there. But then they come in. And probably one of the worst attacks I've ever seen, to be honest with you, on Bad Boy. And they barely, barely get the second star. And uh, not just percent, like the Town Hall barely went down. So not only was it low percent, but it was a very close to a one star and very close to a no star, to be honest with you. So we're feeling really good at this point. All we got to do is two star. These guys don't look like they're that good. And uh, then, of course... Unfortunately, we get another one star. So now we're down a star and we're ahead on percent. They go for Killian. Killian's base holds. Not a lot of percent there, so we're still up on percent. But we are down a star. And let's go ahead and kind of show you how it went. Buraz obviously ends up getting this sexy queen charge Lalo. Um, this was the last base we called. So kind of like an anti-2 trolley base. So what Buraz is going to end up doing, he's going to send in a couple loons to take down his archer tower. And then uh, it's going to kind of create a funnel with a baby dragon. And he's going to bring his queen in like this. He's going to funnel out here, I think with his king. And it's going to end up forcing this queen to take this channel where he's going to do a wall break onto the inferno tower once the wizard tower goes down. So all these buildings will be down. Uh, he's going to use like a rage. Uh, the rage is actually too deep. And it's going to cause him to have to use his queen ability early. So again, things just kind of going wrong. But with that, he ends up getting all these buildings here. And I believe he gets the royal champ. And his queen is actually going to break through and get the infernal tower. So this is everything that he takes out with his queen. He's going to send in a blimp with, I believe, a hound and a couple super goblins for the town hall. It looked like the queen was going to get the town hall, but then she ended up chasing like a ground skelly or something and beating through the wall. Queen ended up dying. But he's going to go ahead and... Or not right there. That's going to be down to the loons. He's going to get his Lalo in with like a, a you know a lava hound flying in and whatnot. And uh, basically the channel he's looking to exploit is going to be here. Because he's got the blimp for the town hall. So this is where he's looking to ride with his Lalo. And you can kind of see, you know, uh, obviously you got two front side air defenses, not a big deal. He's not gonna pull the CC with his queen, so that's risky. But most CCs nowadays are, you know, like a witch and uh, ice golem. So unless it's like a dragon or something like that, it's not really a big deal. You can usually kill it in a poison. This, In this case, I believe it ends up being uh, two ice golems and like 15 archers. So he ends up killing it with a poison. And there's Teslas here. He's actually going to miss one Tesla, so his loons are going to get to like right here and I have to go back for this Tesla, which really sucked. This attack came really close on time as well. 
but you're gonna see as he comes through here he's got all these ground expos these cannons he's gonna use his rc to clear out this corner so the loons stay inside again this channel that he wants everything to stay in and then he's gonna use the haste to get through the scatter and then the tome to get through the scatter wizard tower and into the backside inferno and everything's gonna kind of end up here uh, it comes close on time i wouldn't have came so close on time had the loons not had to double back for this tesla you're gonna see that but overall this was like clutch as hell so burras pulling us back from the brink of a, a shitty war maybe knocking us out of the playoffs and burras comes in with the la and then the, like i don't want to you know kind of dog the other clan but in this league the last two attackers are supposed to go in at the same time and the enemy clan waited till this attack was done you're supposed to both go in at like the five minute mark we went in at like the five minute mark and these guys waited till like the last 20 seconds of war to use their final attack so they were trying to gain like an advantage and of course i'm not gonna like protest or anything like that to win like that we're gonna win off stars or percent in this case but i thought it was a pretty shitty thing for them to do it's supposed to you know add the pressure of both attacking at the same time but yeah he ends up getting this uh arch tower down just barely because that uh tesla popped up he's gonna get his queen going two super wall breakers one of them kind of does something stupid and breaks open the wrong wall but doesn't actually end up being useful it's only bringing one of his own lava hounds he's got another lava hound in the cc so gets his rage down queen's gonna go ahead and do her thing and this was a crazy attack there was like eight of us on voice there's a bunch of people watching the stream um guys in discord were comment like put typing in chat and all that stuff so it's a pretty fun war we're really enjoying these little 5v5 leagues we're actually in another playoff war today in uh the Erevos cup or however you pronounce that i believe it's Erevos. but yeah so queen he ends up trying to freeze the scatter and the queen but the queen's just like one tile off so it forces the ability but queen's gonna pick up the scatter shot and then rager again gets the eagle which is huge king's gonna get the enemy rc and then queen's beating through the wall which is awesome because we're thinking oh shit she's gonna get the town hall but he he plays it safe smart move queen gets the inferno instead activates the town hall and it's gonna end up killing the queen so kind of sucks there but uh that scatter shot too but ends up not needing it so he gets a poison the hound flies over to the air defense ground expo is not doing anything to his lalo and here's that tesla just one loon one loon would have did the trick so here they all go back to the tesla rc's over here uh doesn't get a ton of value the ice golems end up going over to the rc but he's got just enough he's gonna get the tome boom and then just enough to get i mean it, it came down to the wire if the rc would have got those two outside buildings down i think without the ice golems being there she probably would have but gets a nice split right here wizard tower wizard tower wardens being a freaking champ enemy warden being a pain in the ass and then we were really worried about time because the enemy bk obviously you know bk uh if it's right underneath the balloons the balloons will take the time to kill it and then you had these ice golems just like finds a tornado trap wardens working on the bk everything is on the, on the ice golems they freeze and this is this is actual real time there was 12 seconds left in the attack and uh the warden right here you don't see this very often but doing the lord's work very nice very nice so like i said guys that war was pretty intense uh we don't have wars like this very often as far as one star so hopefully we can shake that out of our system probably come up with a couple you know better safe plans uh but overall those those two one stars actually barring the one star would have been triple so you know sometimes you got to risk it for the biscuit and you kind of just live with what you got uh never never think bad about a, a win though you know what i'm saying like got two one stars but we got the win that's all that matters we move on to the next war so we're really enjoying these 5v5 wars uh we're actually signed up for another 5v5 league i believe it's the universal war league and then we're signed up for 
uh, a 10 v 10 league and then I'm working on getting us signed up in another 10 v 10 league so there's gonna be a lot more of these short format wars a uh, lot of fun and we're hoping uh, we can kind of be one of the staples in the community there so uh, that's it for this video guys hope you guys enjoyed it it was a very intense war uh, if you want to catch these wars we do have a streamer I'll link his Twitter or not his Twitter uh, his twitch in the video description and that way if you give him a follow or sub whatever they call it on twitch uh, you can know when he goes live he covers all of our wars for these 5v5 scene stuff and 10v10 so if you want to catch it live uh, give him some support it, it all helps us in the very end so appreciate all the love and support guys and of course as always to my beautiful wife thank you very much for everything you do baby i love you all right guys catch you on the next one